what are the most important pieces of a bone building program? You've heard me say it's not calcium. I don't even think it's vitamin D or vitamin K. One of the most important pieces is the amino acids that we eat. Specifically, with amino acids, it really depends on where they come from, in what ratio they come in, how your body processes them, and how they fuel the bone building cells. Also, how your gut, your hormone, and your immune system all play a role in how these building blocks build bone or not. In this episode, we're going to break down why amino acids matter, what we are doing with amino acid supplementation in our clinical practice, and how this all fits into the bigger picture of osteoporosis prevention or reversal. So let's start with the big picture. Osteoporosis isn't just a disease of calcium loss. It's a disease of cellular imbalance. You've heard me say it's the metabolic imbalance. Too much breakdown, not enough buildup. Well, osteoblasts need to build bone. Osteoclasts need to break down bone. But then there's also the stem cells, the mesenchymal cells that decide who gets more support. Osteoclasts, osteoblasts, actually fat cells are in there too. But all three of those cells depend on amino acids for energy, for communication, and even for gene expression. Yeah, gene expression. This goes down all the way to your DNA because amino acids don't just build proteins. They don't just build muscle and bone. They help turn on certain genes. They help through epigenetic signaling. They help through the breakdown products of the specific amino acids. So let's dig into what these things actually are, because I think this gets really confusing. And the word amino acid is used in a lot of different contexts, but it usually all means the same thing. Amino acids are just simply the basic building blocks of protein. There's actually 20 of them that you can mix and match to come up with different proteins. There are nine of them that are called essentials. So you've heard of essential amino acids or EAAs. They're called essential because your body can't make them. You have to get them from your diet or from supplementation. Within that group of essential amino acids, there's a subgroup called branch chain amino acids. Now you may have heard of this as a separate type of supplement popular on and off in the fitness space, bodybuilding space, because branch chain amino acids include these three, leucine, isoleucine, and valine. Now, these three have unique structure and play specialized roles in muscle and metabolic health. Leucine, in particular, is a superstar when it comes to muscle and bone. Leucine is probably the most powerful trigger of a key cellular growth pathway called mTOR. You may have heard of this in the longevity space, but mTOR is an acronym that stands for Mechanistic Target of Rapamycin. Maybe you've heard of people in the longevity space taking rapamycin as a tool for longevity. Totally another topic. But when you activate mTOR, you stimulate protein synthesis, specifically in this case, muscle protein synthesis. You stimulate cell growth. You stimulate anabolic activity. And that's good if you want to build muscle and bone. But here's the catch, and this is where in the longevity space this gets wonky because chronic mTOR activation isn't always a good thing. In fact, arguably, it's never a good thing. It needs to be balanced. We always need to have periods of fasting with periods of feasting. This is the whole point of the back and forth. That's why we fast and feast. That's why we don't eat overnight. But we want mTOR to be able to turn on sometimes, and leucine is a good way to do that in a very predictable way. So let's pick another important one. So let's talk about glutamine, because glutamine is a really popular supplement in the gut health space, but it's not just for gut health. It's not just for the gut health lining, which is one of the things that it's used for. It actually does a lot of different things. So when you talk about bone specifically, it has an impact on the stem cells. It has an impact on osteoblasts. It actually helps support protein synthesis, antioxidant defense, and anti-inflammatory signaling. So glutamine is doing a lot of things all over the body, not just in the gut. It's also the precursor to a really interesting compound called alpha-ketoglutarate. So alpha-ketoglutarate is a key intermediate in what's called the TCA cycle. So this is how glutamine can have an impact on energy production. But alpha-ketoglutarate actually goes a step further, and it has an impact on the epigenome. It has an impact on the way that your DNA is actually expressing protein. This is important because from a bone health perspective, it helps stem cells, these mesenchymal stem cells, to become osteoblasts instead of fat cells. You may have heard that osteoporosis is a disease where there's fat cells in the bone marrow, and that's true. Now, there's always fat cells in the bone marrow, but as people's bone become more brittle, as the, the trabecular bone on the inside gets more fragile and there's more spaces, it does get filled with more fat. 
One thinking behind that is that the stem cells are becoming fat cells rather than osteoblasts. They have the same precursor cell. So if you're creating, if from an epigenetic perspective, you're creating more fat cells rather than osteoblasts, it's going to lead you down this pathway. At least that's the theory. So glutamine then is a really important one because more alpha ketoglutarate means better stem cell decision-making, more bone formation, better for your gut, better from an energy perspective. If you don't have as much, you're going to probably have more, potentially, fat cells in your bone marrow. You're going to have weaker bones. You're going to potentially have leaky gut. You're not going to have as much energy coming out of your TCA cycle. So glutamine is a really important amino acid. Now let's talk about another one that's really misunderstood. So tryptophan, might be think of this one from like turkey, if you've heard turkey is high in tryptophan, which is true. Um, but tryptophan is an interesting one because it is broken down into different things. So tryptophan, again, it's an amino acid. It is an essential amino acid. You have to get it from your diet. But people say that it causes drowsiness. Turkey dinners cause drowsiness, probably because there was too much food. But potentially the tryptophan is metabolized into melatonin. Melatonin, obviously, we probably know this from supplementation. Melatonin helps with circadian rhythm, can cause drowsiness. It's also converted into serotonin. So this can have an impact on mood. Um, it's also broken down into this interesting thing called kynurenine. Now, kynurenine is not as well known. It is not one of the neurotransmitters that we talk about on, our, on a daily basis, but it is something that we can measure. And when you have high levels of this breakdown product, it is associated with low bone mineral density. Why? Well, it's because kynurenine promotes osteoclast activity. It's actually promoted, that breakdown pathway is promoted by an inflammatory pathway, by an inflammatory condition. So tryptophan by itself is not a bad thing, but if the environment that the tryptophan is in is inflammatory, then instead of making serotonin or melatonin, it's gonna go down the kynurenine pathway and that's gonna have a negative impact on bone through the osteoclasts. So then should we be avoiding tryptophan? Should we not eat turkey? Is turkey bad for bones? No, that's not what I'm saying at all. Your body's gonna do with these amino acids what the environment is telling it to do. If you're in an environment that's inflamed, that has poor metabolic function, it's probably not gonna do good things with some of these amino acids, specifically tryptophan. But if your environment, if your body, if your vessel is healthy, low in inflammation, low in oxidative stress, has an anabolic push, has an mTOR kick right now, then we can build bone, we can build muscle, and we need tryptophan to do that. So we shouldn't be avoiding the substrate. We shouldn't be avoiding the thing that could potentially cause bone loss. We really need to make sure that the entire picture, the entire body, the entire vessel is ready for what we're giving it. Now, here's another interesting thing about tryptophan. Collagen is known as an incomplete protein, right? And we all we talk a lot about collagen. I like collagen, but collagen is low in tryptophan. So I've actually heard some people say, well, maybe it's because there's no tryptophan in collagen or it's a very low level of tryptophan in collagen and that's why it's good for bones. I don't think the literature supports that. I don't think that the tryptophan leading to kynurenine, leading to bone loss is a powerful enough pathway in most people to potentially make collagen better than a whole protein source. Does that make sense? So I wouldn't use collagen as a protein source because it's low in tryptophan. I've just heard people talk about that. I wanted to put that out there. Okay, so then let's get to the clinical side, right? Because this is one of the most important things. If you're considering supplementation, what do you do? Should you be getting this through food? Should you take EAAs? Should you take branch chain amino acids? How do you want to manage getting enough amino acids in your diet? Well, here's the deal. Supplementation with either branched chain amino acids or essential amino acids can help in specific contexts, especially if your diet is lacking in them or if you're using them specifically around resistance training to improve muscle recovery and muscle protein synthesis in the face of the stress of exercise. But you still need the mechanical loading. I was actually having a funny conversation with a guy uh, two days ago. He said he was increasing his protein because he wanted to put on muscle mass. And then he asked me if he needed to work out in order to do that. So he'd heard that protein was good for muscle. He thought just eating more protein, when he would actually build muscle. No, you have to stress your muscles. Your muscles don't respond to dietary change. Your fat cells will, but your muscles won't respond to dietary change alone. You have to actually stress them. You need that mechanical loading. And when you look up literature on this, 
branched-chain amino acids and essential amino acids, they don't consistently improve bone mineral density. I've done videos on this, and there are studies that show that it can be beneficial, but it has to be in the right setting. We need all of the things in there, right? We need all the other factors optimized. Diet, quality of protein, exercise, type of exercise, intensity, hormone optimization, all the things. So by itself, not a very powerful tool, but in the right setting, potentially. But I really am more of a fan of getting all of your amino acids through whole food sources. So if you can get all the amino acids that you need through high quality protein sources from animals, which are going to have all of the essential amino acids in them, in the ratios that your body's expecting them, then I think you're much better off than using an essential amino acid supplement. I think the reason for that is that your body knows what to do with these amino acids when they come in, in the context of all the other things, right? So if you're eating it in meat, for example, it's gonna come in with all these other vitamins, these cofactors. If you're getting it through dairy, it's gonna have calcium and fat and phosphorus and vitamin D. So your body's just gonna know what to do with the amino acids if the context is within whole food. If it's outside of that, if you're using a supplement, then there is still value as the research would support it, but again, it has to be in the right place. Now also remember that taking essential amino acids with whole foods is not going to be likely beneficial. The reason for that is your body responds, again, to the dose. Your body responds to the, the speed. That's why it, drinking protein shakes can be powerful for making muscle mass because the speed at which you can consume and hopefully absorb protein that way. If you're taking 30 grams of protein at whole food and you're adding essential amino acids on top of that, hopefully through a drink, then your body's just going to see all of the amino acids together. It's going to break them all down into amino acids anyway. So it's just like adding whatever, another five grams of protein to your protein, but it's not in a way that your body's going to understand it. So I don't think you should take EAAs with protein source. I don't think you should put EAAs in protein powder. I don't think that makes sense. You need to take EAAs away from other food. You need to take them on an empty stomach. That's why it's great to take them while you're working out or right after you work out in a recovery drink, because then in that setting, your body's going to recognize high leucine load and it's going to stimulate mTOR, stimulate muscle protein synthesis. All right. So let's wrap all that up. If you're struggling with bone loss or you're working to prevent it, think beyond calcium. Think beyond vitamin D. Think beyond weight-bearing exercise. Think metabolism. Think amino acids. Think anti-inflammatory. Think antioxidative stress. Glutamine and its metabolite alpha-ketic glutarate support the builders. Leucine and the branched-chain amino acids activate anabolic signaling through mTOR. Excess kynurenine from tryptophan is actually breaking down bone, but only in an inflamed body. So remember that your gut your hormones, your immune system are all working with what you're giving it, with all that substrate, with all that food to be able to build bone or not. And honestly, I think this is really the future of osteoporosis care. This is metabolomics. This is microbiome science. This is targeted nutritional therapy. Clinically, in our practice, we're using these essential amino acid supplements strategically. Actually, better word would be tactically. We understand the strategy of getting adequate protein, but using essential amino acids is a tactic. Again, on an empty stomach, when somebody is not getting adequate protein or during a workout to help to push that muscle protein synthesis and recovery. The goal is to support the muscles, to support the skeleton, enhance mTOR signaling through the natural mechanism and ensure the availability of the actual building blocks of the protein in the bone as you're building bone. And of course, we're also pairing this then with gut support, hormone optimization, uh, supplements or lifestyle or diet for uh, decreased inflammation, because without the right internal environment, even the best amino acid or the best protein or the best branch chain amino acid, whatever it is that you're trying to do is not going to be effective. And I'm gonna say it one more time. If you're taking essential amino acids with a meal, if you're putting essential amino acids into your protein shake, which will make it taste terrible, by the way, but if you're doing that, it's like pouring a water bottle into a pool. You already have enough water in there. You don't need to add the water bottle to the pool. Same thing with your food. You don't need to add more essential amino acids to your meal unless your meal is deficient. And this is where potentially using 
branched chain amino acids or leucine by itself, in addition to a leucine deficient meal, that might actually make sense. That would be relevant in like a, a plant-based diet or other protein sources that are low in leucine. Now, if this is news to you and you're already making this mistake, don't sweat it. We all make mistakes. The pathway of rebuilding bone is actually really complex and most people are making quite a few mistakes. It's okay. There's really no harm in doing it the quote unquote wrong way or adding it to food or whatever, except for the dollars down the drain. EAAs are expensive, but one of the things that I do, and if you haven't done this, please consider doing it. One of the things we do is a masterclass about every other week. In that masterclass, we talk about the top five mistakes that we see people make because we see thousands of people go down this journey, right? So we talk about those top five mistakes, help to see if you are doing one of them, answer questions for about 20 minutes. I think it's a really powerful tool if you haven't done it. The link for that is in the description on YouTube, or you can visit our website at osteocollective.com. That's it for today. Remember that a diagnosis of osteoporosis isn't the end, but deciding to reverse it is a beginning. So let's move forward by honoring our health and aging with strength and grace.